Welcome to the Rock is George podcast. I'm your host, George Dion, and this is episode 41. Thank you for tuning in to the Rock is George podcast, whether it's on YouTube, your favorite podcasting platform, or rockisgeorge.com. If you've listened to past episodes of the Rock is George podcast, you know I have a soft spot for the Swedish melodic hard rock bands, bands like Eclipse or Perfect Plan. Crazy Licks, or Cry. And for episode 41, we're featuring another one of those bands. The name of the band is Degreed. I first discovered Degreed with their 2019 release, Lost Generation. Fantastic hooks, fantastic songs. Couldn't get enough of it. Took a few more years, but here we are in 2022 with Degreed's latest album, Are You Ready? It's their first album for the Frontiers music label, and it takes it up a notch from Lost Generation. They cut out a lot of the love songs and stick with the anthems and the up-tempo numbers. And my guest today is drummer Mats Erickson of Degreed. If I knew absolutely nothing about Degreed, how would you describe the band's music to me? Uh, I would say we're playing uh, melodic hard rock uh, with... Uh... 80s influences absolutely i'd agree with that and your latest album is are you ready it's your sixth album overall it's your first for frontiers music uh it's sold out in the u.s shop you guys must be pretty excited about that oh that's nice i didn't even know that (laughs) thank you for telling (laughs) me that that's amazing well i see that you guys have a vinyl edition coming out soon through frontiers so obviously they must be happy with how the the formats that they do have are doing. Yeah, I think so. Uh, We went into this like collaboration with Frontiers. Uh, I don't think any of us uh, had any expectations uh, except for working with a great label and and they think we we make great music, but to be able to like sell out in the US store and (laughs) well, sales overall has been been great. I, I don't think we ever expected that so it's definitely going better than than we thought so that's why they they probably want to print vinyls as well Uh, and we're really excited about that i love the vinyl format and uh, it's going to be a red red vinyl so that's pretty cool as well uh how did you how did you end up signing with frontiers i know you had a couple albums before you signed with frontiers yeah uh we've been like on on several different labels none of which have worked out as well as we've hoped so before before this album uh our the the album before was on uh, a label called gain which is a part of sony music here in sweden Uh, and it didn't really work out that that either uh the collaboration wasn't all that good and it, it started to like they didn't care that much anymore uh and when we got dropped there, we, we, we sat down and thought about which label would be good for us or which labels we should uh, get in contact with. And uh, Frontiers was, of course, on top of that list. Uh, they're doing so, so many great things uh, for the, the melodic hard rock scene. And they've started do, doing uh, stuff with uh, metal bands and stuff uh, as well now. And they're, they have a reach that other labels don't have uh, for for the particular audience that listens to us uh, and our kind of music so it's just it's a great great thing to be a part of that family now we should have we should have done this years ago (laughs) (laughs) let's talk a little bit about the singles that you have out now if you want to kind of tell the story if there is a story behind into the fire i don't know it if there's any story, I think this is a an old uh, uh, an oldie. <laughs> it's been a demo for like six years or something, uh, quite a long time, and we haven't done anything with it. Uh, so a couple of summers ago, we sat down uh, in the studio and wrote some lyrics for it, and uh, yeah, uh, tried to record the the vocal parts for it, and it turned out to. To this and I didn't think it was gonna make make the record but it did and it became the first single <laughs> so uh, 
I don't yes, I don't did. think oh. I don't think that your music is overly complicated, but if you want to kind of tell what Into the Fire is about lyrically. Oh, that's a hard one. <laughs> 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 I I don't know actually. I think Robin wrote most of the the lyrics. Um, okay. For this this one I think I was I only wrote a few words or changed a few words when we were producing the the song. So I can't really answer for that. <laughs> I'm That's I, fine. I haven't even reflected over it. <laughs> it's a good <laughs> melody. <laughs> so this was kind of your uh, COVID lockdown album. Uh, yeah. Obviously, the best of the best made the album. Do you have any cuts that you're considering releasing down the road? Uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, I was ac actually working on a few songs uh, the other day, and uh, uh, I think some some great songs uh, got left out of the album because it, we, we didn't have place for it. Uh, and I think uh, those songs are great. Uh, so they, they might be released on the next album or further down the road. Uh, like Into the Fire, it, it was we had that song for the past two albums, but it didn't make the past two albums but it made this one and became the first single so I, I think it's great like you should try everything with every song and send it the labels way and let them decide because they, they chose the the singles for for the album and uh, I think that's a great thing because we've gotten very good response on Into the Fire for instance which none of us thought really would make the album almost so are you ready was recorded in your recording studio how long have you had this studio and do you have uh, other artists that record there yeah i've had the studio since 2017 yeah i've been recording uh, tons of artists and bands uh, ted poley has been there he came from the the states uh, to record an album which we the whole the band plays on so I, I have that as a part-time job. There's always something to do there. And I work with tons of bands. Ted Poli, the Ted Poli album, the last solo album that he had or the work of art one? Uh, yeah, Modern Art. Modern Art, that's it. That was you guys backing him up on that? I had no idea. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome album. Yeah. Who came up with the band name Degreed? I think it's uh, Robin and Daniel came up with it. And that's a long time ago. <laughs> that's like 12 <laughs> years ago or something. <laughs> was there anything we that inspired kids. it? I don't know. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we've always talked about how silly it is. Uh, and we don't really like it ourselves. But now it's too, <laughs> kind of too late to change it now. <laughs> so we'll stick with it. <laughs> <laughs> Why not, right? <laughs> we have to, I think. <laughs> Uh, you guys weren't able to tour on your last album, Lost Generation. Um, are you going to be able to tour for Are You Ready? Yeah. Uh, since the, the, the restrictions are, are uh, getting lesser and lesser, uh, we'll be able to tour. Now, now the problem is that everyone <laughs> is going to tour this year, I think. So until the fall of this year or something won't be that easy to tour I think because now everyone is uh, like I said touring and everyone wants to go to all the shows but you can't really go to all the shows <laughs> yeah. so I think we'll do some festival gigs during the summer and then hopefully uh, a tour uh, in the fall or maybe start of next next year or something I saw that Degreed is managed by Eric Gronwall of New Horizon and Heat how did you guys hook up with him and kind of what does he bring to the game for you guys? Um, uh, the music business in Sweden is really small. <laughs> so uh, the other Heat guys went to the same school as uh, me, Robin and Daniel. Robin and Daniel actually went maybe the grade below them or something. So they knew them. I'm a bit younger, so, so I never, I wasn't in school when they, they had graduated when I started there, but uh, that's how they know uh, those guys. And then Eric was in heat, like you know, uh, and uh, Jonas or Jonah T. 
uh, introduced Eric to the grid and uh, he thought it was great so he, he contacted us and said he wanted to sign us uh, which was a no-brainer for us <laughs> Eric is uh, he has uh, so much energy <laughs> <laughs> and he, he really puts in the work so he gets things done and that, that's an important thing when you're managing someone Oh, you say that Sweden music scene is a small music scene, but you have a decent amount of bands out there doing what they call Swedish melodic rock. And you have a lot of those artists that are signed to Frontiers Music, uh, Eclipse, Crazy Licks, Perfect Plan, Cry, Degreed, obviously. Is there any friendly competition between you guys or maybe serious competition where you guys are like, those guys stink, we got to do better than those guys? When I said the, the, the music scene is uh, small, it's like everyone knows each other uh, and everyone like wants the best uh, for, for your friends. <laughs> for instance, the Eclipse guys, Magnus, the guitarist, we're, we're great friends. We've played uh, cover bands together and uh, uh, I want nothing for, but the best for them. Uh, so uh, it's more like friendly competition than maybe <laughs> and, like jokingly <laughs> saying something. But it's it's never like serious competition. You only want the best for for the other people, and uh, there's there's a lot of great bands that come from Sweden, like you said. Wigwam is sort of having a little boom over here in the states because they got us one of their older songs in a, in, a, yeah. in the uh, Peacemaker TV show. Yeah, I saw that. They they really like on on Spotify as well. It's it's crazy that they, they're streaming really well. That's <laughs> nice. You're going to start shopping your stuff to movies and TVs and all that other stuff. Yeah, that would be great. <laughs> you only have to find the, the right person to, to do it. <laughs> Absolutely. But Eric just... actually had uh, a few of his clients actually was in the Peacemaker show as well. So uh, I think he tried it with us, but <laughs> they didn't want it. It was too soft. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say the new album is that soft. Well, maybe for no, them, but I wouldn't say it's too soft. I think you have a lot more anthemic, uh, mid to to upbeat rockers than you do ballads this time around. Is that kind yeah. of the plan going in? You didn't want so many ballads. I think I think we had to make a re record without uh, that many slow songs because Daniel. Whenever we show, show him a slow song, he says it's a bad song. He doesn't listen to it even. <laughs> so <laughs> it was a little bit to, to please him and uh, Mickey as well, because they love <laughs> fast songs. <laughs> and it has to be real rock and roll <laughs> kind of song. So, but, uh, and I think we all wanted to make a, a record with uh, a little bit more hard rock approach to it. You guys have toured on past albums obviously is there a band that you had a wonderful experience uh playing with opening up for anything like that uh we actually went on tour with heat back in 2017 and that was a great tour um, a month-long tour in uh, europe and that was one of the best experiences i've had on the road uh, they took really good care of us and uh, it was just great a great turnout on the shows as well that that was really fun and uh, we've played with uh, poodles as well which is they're great people uh, especially kicken he's a funny guy <laughs> there's talk a lot, uh, and a lot of festivals uh, where we met bands uh, from sweden and uh, from other parts of the world uh, and had a great time hanging it's nice to meet people that's kind of a <laughs> what's been missing during this pandemic as well. Every time you're out playing, meeting people, there's something, uh, it's always a great memory. Uh, have you ever had a show, not particularly with someone, but have you ever had a show that just went horribly wrong? Like it was straight out of the Spinal Tap movie? <laughs> not, not a show. Uh, I think we've uh, managed to uh, not have so many problems on stage as off stage <laughs> it's normally stuff uh, that happens between gigs when you're on tour we've had a few experiences that have been uh, less pleasant 
I don't think I should mention any of them <laughs> because they're not they're not great. <laughs> they're that unpleasant. Uh, they shall not yeah. be spoken of again. <laughs> Your brother Robin had a solo project out on Frontiers Music called Robin Red. Do you or anybody else in the group have any other projects going on the side? I mean, all musicians today, they they, they have something else going on. I mean, you got the recording studio, but do you, yeah. does anybody else in the band have music projects? Uh, I actually played drums on the Robin Red album as well. <laughs> of course. And, uh, me uh, and Robin play on a, a, a also a Frontiers band called City of Lights which is uh, Neil Austin, uh, a good friend. And uh, he's a huge uh, The Greed fan. We met him in the, when we toured in the UK a few years ago. So we're doing uh, that album. And I think Daniel and uh, Michael are also playing, on, uh, playing solos on some of the songs on that album. Uh, and then Micke plays in uh, Paralydium Project, which is also a Frontiers band. <laughs> it's all Frontiers bands. <laughs> Uh, and uh, uh, Daniel uh, is, uh, at least in the videos, he plays guitar for New Horizon uh, with Eric and uh, Jonah. So we're, we're doing uh, a couple of uh, things on the side as well, but uh, whenever we have time, at least. <laughs> but the greed is the main focus. <laughs> well, one day Frontiers will come to you and they will pick you for one of their quarterly super groups that they put together and it'll be you and someone from eclipse and someone from crazy legs and someone from perfect plan and they'll put that together and they'll, they'll give it a silly name and see how it goes yeah yeah that that will most likely happen as well that's <laughs> it's right it's not a prediction it's a spoiler yeah it is. <laughs> so you were telling me that you're opening a restaurant uh what's what's going on with that yeah. Um, we have a restaurant uh, already uh, in the, the little town I, I live called Coppa Bay. Uh, so we have an English pub here. And now we opened uh, another location, which is like 45 minutes from where I live. So me, my little brother, my wife and his uh, go girlfriend uh, are uh, managing those two restaurants and this summer we're also opening a nightclub in a place called Öland. it's an island be beside sweden where all the people go during the summer all the rich people at least <laughs> so that's, that's what you want <laughs> good for business <laughs> <laughs> is that something you went to so, school for business management or the restaurant no. did, you, did you work in the restaurant business? Like that. never i never <laughs> thought i would end up here <laughs> but uh it's an investment to begin, deal. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in, in the beginning, it was uh, the, the first place we're running is a pub uh, that is a franchise. It's a franchise model. So we're running the, the concept for uh, a brewery called Coppa Bay's Brewery, which is, uh, I think, the second largest brewery in Sweden or third or something. Uh, and my, my dad is good friends with the the owner of it so he actually contacted our father and asked if me and my little brother you one would be interested in running a restaurant and at that time we worked full time with music so we were like no we we're not going to do that and uh, he was persistent <laughs> so <laughs> they called several times to, to our father and uh, after a while we were like we, we played in cover bands and stuff like that to support ourselves but uh, after a few, few tries, we actually started thinking about it and it, it would be nice to be more home and uh, to be able to like, not sounds wrong now when it's been a pandemic, but we didn't want to travel that much. <laughs> so uh, we, we said yes, <laughs> and that's how it started. Uh, so it's only been, <laughs> we've learned by doing so none of us have any experience and my, my brother and his girlfriend started in the kitchen and it's a lot of like rules and regulations and stuff around that so they had to learn everything from scratch by themselves uh, and i was in the bar <laughs> i've never made a drink in my whole life like a <laughs> cocktail 
So I had to learn all that. And uh, then the business side around it. Uh, uh, so, so we had to learn everything. But fortunately, our father is an accountant, so he could help us a lot. Uh, so, so that's my my day job now, basically. It turned out good, <laughs> even though I never thought this would happen. <laughs> <laughs> so now you have to take the friendly Swedish melodic rock rivalry to the next level. The greed needs their own branded beer because Eclipse has their own branded yeah. beer. So now you need it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to have to talk to, to the brewery about that. <laughs> They'll have to fix it. <laughs> Oh, they're running out of names anyway for beer, so they might as well throw your name on it. Yeah, exactly. And a picture <laughs> of me. <laughs> That's right. Nobody else, just you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's all I got for you today, Matt. Uh, your new album is Are You Ready? It's out now. It's fantastic. The reviews are great. I think it's fantastic. Although I was a big va- fan of the last album, I think you've outdone yourself. Thank you very much. That's very nice to hear. And thanks for taking the time to come on the Rock is George podcast. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Once again, I want to thank Matt Erickson of Degreed for coming on the Rock is George podcast. Be sure to check out Degreed's new album, Are You Ready? Out now. You can stream the album on your favorite streaming platform. And if you like what you hear, head over to the Frontiers Music Store and buy a physical copy. Make sure you're supporting the artist. I want to thank Dustin Hardman of Hardman Promotions for making this interview possible. You've been great. I've been George Dion, and I'll see you again soon, probably with a Swedish melodic hard rock band.